In today's episode, I'm talking all about the questions that we need answered most when it comes to the new skate game. So follow along and let's talk some skate. Welcome back to another episode of the Hippie Jump Podcast, a podcast all about the video game franchise Skate. I am your host, William, and if you enjoy what I bring you today, I would greatly appreciate it if you like and subscribe to the podcast. So before I jump into today's episode, I want to talk about a few things real quick. First of all, I have something interesting for you guys. I don't know if anyone would be interested in this, but I figured out that the podcast host that I use, which is Anchor, actually has a feature where you can send in like voice comments or voice questions and stuff. So I have a link down below if you guys really would want to do that. Um, don't send me anything weird. If you do, I, it's not gonna make it on the episode. <laughs> but yeah, if I don't know, if you want to be featured in the episode even more and you want your voice to actually be heard in the show, you can do it. The only downside to that is you do have to make an Anchor account, but I don't think it takes long. Um, so if you if you really want to do that you can go through it uh, if not then whatever it's fine another thing is Recently on the Xbox store skate one had a name change So it used to just be called skate period like the new game or how the game was originally titled But now it says skate and then in parentheses it says 2007 and I know that might not seem like anything to you guys and it could mean nothing but I think it is interesting that they just changed the name to distinguish that this is the old version of the skate. I think it could potentially mean that they're loading in the new game on the back end servers or however that works onto the Xbox platform because hopefully this means playtesting is coming to consoles soon. So you know they're getting ahead of it, adding the game to the console, but they have to distinguish between both games. They can't have two titles named the same thing. So they had to put the 2007 on the old skate because now the new one's on there. So like I said, that could totally mean nothing or it means something. I have a feeling if they're gonna change the name of the game, that probably means they're adding the other game to the console. So hopefully we can expect some play tests coming soon for console players. Now, I wanna jump into today's topic. So as we all know, it's been a few weeks since the boardroom and the boardroom answered a lot of questions, but at the same time brought a lot of questions for everyone involved. Obviously with them saying the game's free to play, it raised a lot of concern from the whole community and everyone has questions on how this is actually gonna work. So I decided to make a list of questions that we need to know the answers to pertaining to Skate. I'm not trying to be like a crazy fan and be like, we need answers ASAP. Like now, give us answers. Like that's not what I'm doing, but I'm just saying, these are like the questions that need to be answered like first. This is the stuff we need to get out of the way first before we move on to any other details in the game, I think. So number one, let's jump into it. What is the story mode going to be? You know in the boardroom that they said that this game is gonna be more than a linear single player experience. What does that actually mean? We need explanation on that. We need them to elaborate on that. Saying it's not just a linear single player experience sounds like there's still gonna be a single player element to the game does that mean we're still gonna get pros and cutscenes and stuff like old games or is there just gonna be challenges throughout the world and some narration stuff like that i i don't know we we need the answers to that i'm really not expecting a traditional story like the older games but a lot of people are saying that there's not going to be any story at all and that is completely false information so if anyone tells you that, don't believe them because that is not confirmed and do not run with that information because that's not true. We need to hear from Full Circle first before we make any judgments and anything like that, but we have to have them elaborate on that because it's pretty important to the community, obviously. A lot of people only play the single player. I pretty much only play single player when it comes to skate games. So, you know, I want to know the answers to it as well. And also, I want to be straight up and honest about this. The older skate games, while there was a single player career and a story mode, it's not like they revolutionize the story mode and there was anything crazy going on. Really, it was just you have a cutscene and then there's a challenge or something like that, or you follow a pro or something in that nature. There was just a little cutscene before every mission. 
So it's not like they were doing anything crazy story-wise. So I feel like they could still implement that into a free-to-play multiplayer game. But instead of it only being single player, it's still on an online server that you're playing on with people. But these single player missions would take you out of that multiplayer portion of the game for a bit. I don't know, that is something we really need the answers to. Another thing that we need addressed is microtransactions. This is probably the hottest topic when it comes to the new skate game, and it ranges from genuine concerns to people saying that we're gonna be charged to do a kickflip, which is absolutely crazy. Tricks are not gonna be behind a paywall. That is a paid advantage. They already said there is no paid gameplay advantages. We also know that there's in-game items when you start out that you can unlock just by playing the game. You don't have to pay for them. I just wonder how far does that go? How many items do we really have that we can just unlock from playing? Or does that pertain to any item in the game? Like, does it get super grindy where you have to do a certain amount of things to get one pair of clothes or you can just pay for it and fast track straight to that item and you have it, boom, you paid for it. That's something we really need clarification on. Also a thing that we need clarification on is loot boxes. Because in the boardroom, I believe on the picture it said no paid loot boxes and then Dan said no loot boxes. There won't be any loot boxes. There won't be any loot boxes. So that's kind of sending a different message. Are we getting no loot boxes at all? Or are we getting loot boxes, but they're not paid loot boxes? We need clarification on that. Well, I don't know why they weren't specific about their wording. They had to have known that people were gonna be like, well, which one is it? Because you just said two different things in a way. Because just saying there's no paid loot boxes isn't saying that there's no loot boxes at all, but that's what Dan said. So which, which one do we believe? <laughs> and something that doesn't help is recently the alpha was data mined and someone found something called swag bags. That doesn't help anything. What are swag bags? We need explanation on that because now everyone knows about it when they weren't necessarily supposed to know about it. And we need clarification on what a swag bag is. Is that a loot box? Is that a form of loot boxes that we can buy? That's kind of what it sounds like to me. Or do you just earn swag bags in the game and maybe there's specific brands or you know what's in a swag bag? Or something like that. That kind of complicates the loot box conversation in itself. We need to know what a swag bag is too. The next thing is where does user generated content actually come into this game? Leading up to this game they were saying that we're gonna have a lot of user generated content. It's gonna be heavily influenced by what the players are creating. So we need to know how far does that go? I mean we know collabo zones and that's creating your own parks and stuff. But are we going to be able to create our own brands, our own clothes, our logos and everything? And also people are saying that you're going to be able to sell your brands that you make in the game for real money. And I'm sure they have plans of explaining this stuff soon, eventually, but that's something we need to know about. I want clarification on what the user generated content actually is in this game. What is it going to entail? We haven't really heard anything about a in-game designer of any sort, so will we have that? Is that going to be a thing? I think if we are able to make our own brands and sell them, that's going to be really interesting. It's going to be a really crazy concept for a video game. I don't think anyone's really done something like that before. I do love the idea of having fake skate brands like in Skater XL, so I do hope that this is a feature in the game. I just wonder if it's actually going to be monetized like we've heard. So I want clarification on user generated content. Now I just touched on Collabo Zone for a second. Let's talk about Collabo Zone. Obviously on paper it sounds fun, but I'm scared to get excited about it because it sounds like it's going to be a mess. What What is the plan to stop people from griefing in Collabo Zones? It sounds like you can create something with all these people in a lobby, but we all know that's going to get toxic very quickly. If you look at something like Skater XL, they had an in-game object dropper that you could use online in a lobby and it was a terrible idea it turned out terribly and they took it out so <laughs> how do we avoid that happening i definitely want more clarification on how collabo zone is going to work and how we can combat griefers and people really messing up your session with your friends are you just going to be forced to go into a private lobby with your friends to collabo zone i mean that would kind of suck if you're already in this public lobby you've already started building and then Someone comes in, they start putting stuff everywhere, and they ruined what you guys are skating. I'm sure Full Circle has talked about this to each other in length. I mean, I'm sure this is a big concern for the team in general. So I'm sure they're working on something 
to combat that. But I do wanna know, what is that gonna be like? And then I have one more for you all. And this is something I've seen questions of a lot and I've even seen it in my comment sections. Will there be a Switch version? We got confirmation for everything, PC, last gen, new gen, consoles, we got mobile, but we heard nothing about a Switch. If we were gonna get a Switch version, why wouldn't they say it in the boardroom? I think that's weird that they didn't mention it, but it could totally mean that we're not getting a Switch version. But I think if we're getting a mobile version, how come we couldn't get a Switch version, you know? So I would like answers on that, and if there is gonna be a Switch version, I'm assuming they'll announce it soon or talk about it, unless the Switch version is kind of further away than everything else, and it's gonna come later down the line. They haven't even said like no to the Switch version, they haven't really talked about it. So I wanna know, are we gonna have a Switch version? Cause I'm down to play it on my Switch. So those are probably my most important questions for the new Skate game. Obviously we're gonna get answers to all of these eventually, so uh, I'm not trying to rush the devs or anything. These are just things that I wanna know. These are my hottest questions. And we will get answers to all of this in time. I'm assuming we'll get more answers in the next boardroom. And I wonder when that'll be. I wonder if we'll get more news this month at all or not. It has been pretty dry since the boardroom, but they probably uploaded that boardroom and then saw everyone's reactions and kind of assessed everything and took all that information and they're probably gonna put it into the next boardroom. So it probably takes a while to really go through everyone's feedback, especially after the last one where I'm sure the feedback wasn't too great. I'm sure they read through a lot of stuff that honestly sucked. So they gotta take that information and really be like, okay, what do we need to do to not only try to make people chill out, but also answer their questions at the same time. So I am highly looking forward to the next boardroom. I think it's gonna be very interesting what they talk about. I'm hoping we get answers to all of this stuff. So before I head out of here, as always, I'm reacting to your comments and hopefully next episode I can react to some of your voice comments. First of all, thank you for all the love on the board unboxing video. That was amazing. As you see, they're right there and they look great. Um, I, I love them so much. It's awesome. I still can't believe I got them, but thanks for all the love on that. That was awesome. So the first comment is from Zachary. I wanted to talk about this comment because I totally butchered his comment in the last video I made. I'm so sorry about that. I read it wrong and completely misinterpreted it, and that's my bad. But he said, just to clarify my comment on the last video, what I meant by sharing challenges is that you can choose the trick and the spot and share that as a challenge. That is a really cool idea. I love that. That is the type of user-generated content that would make this game continue on and on. So you could do user-created challenges. That would be really cool. Like, I love this idea so much. It would be really cool if you could even do photo challenges and your own video challenges. You could even create your own Own The Lots or your own Hall of Meets. That stuff would keep the game going. That's like some GTA 5 type stuff where they have like custom created levels and races that people just play all the time. That is a really cool idea, Zachary. And I feel like that's something that has probably come up in conversation when developing this game. The next comment comes from the kid and he says, I'm hoping in the new game there's a solo mode with a great story. For the game not to get bored quickly, they need to add activities in the form of Skate 3 with a lot to do for the player who plays offline. And this is what I talked about earlier. We need to know, is there gonna be a story? Is there gonna be a single player? Cause there's a lot of people like him that only play offline. So we need to know what, what's going on. The next comment comes from someone's name that I cannot pronounce and I'm going to absolutely butcher it, but I think it's Sword maybe? I don't know, I already told you in advance that I was gonna butcher your name in this episode. But he says, I hope that they bring the vert and street contests back. It would be even cooler if they make them online. This is something I've talked about a bunch. I want contests to come back. Every time I go back and start a new game in a skate game, I always do the contest first. That's always my favorite thing to do, specifically the street contests. Those are just my favorite. I don't know why, they're just really fun. And I've talked about bringing Street League into this, Olympics into this, contests like that that we could do online. I totally agree with him. I'm like positive that contests will come back, but it would be cool if we can do them online, like he said. The next comment comes from Black Nerd, and he said, lots of social potential with the live service model. Only thing is how you limit the toxic. I've gotten comments like this before. It's 100% true. There is a lot of potential with a live service skate game, but 
How are we gonna stop it from being toxic, especially somewhere like a collabo zone? Or how good is anti-cheat gonna be to prevent people from doing crazy stuff in actual challenges, in spot battles, stuff like that? With free to play and live service comes the potential of a lot of people just being not cool online. So especially if we get something like a proximity chat, that is always dicey. You never know what's gonna happen in those. I'm sure this is, a thing that Full Circle has talked about a lot and honestly I'm sure it's a, probably a headache to deal with. Unfortunately, video games are just gonna have people in the community, always, any community, that are just not cool and just do stupid stuff and just make the game unenjoyable for a lot of people. The question is, how do we combat that? So that's it for your comments and that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I just wanted to do a quick chill little video here. I have some pretty cool things coming up so stay locked on the channel. Also if you really want to go the extra mile and help me out, I would really appreciate if you go check out the audio versions of this podcast as well. Audio numbers really help out podcasts and it helps people to find it more if there's more people listening. So if you want to drive or you're working or something, you don't want to sit and watch me just talk to a camera. You can listen to audio versions, it's there. If you do that, I really appreciate it. Thank you in advance. I hope all of you have a great week and thank you so much for all the great comments. And as always, go play some skate.